Welcome to Community Connections. My name is Linda Williamson, and today we're talking with Mary Gentili. Welcome, Mary. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I was born Maria Costa in the old hospital in McCoslin Hospital in Terrace Bay. So I was born there on February 19th, 1960, and I was born and raised here in Scriber, Ontario. Um, my parents uh, emigrated like all the other Italians. They came to, to Scriber. My parents were the lucky ones. They came in the summer. They came in June um, as other people came in the winter. And that kind of just, you know, put a, a damper in their arrival date, whatever. Um, my parents came in June of 1959 and they have arrived here. I just had to say the correct uh, ship name. They came in 1959 on Pier 21 uh, in Halifax, they arrived. And it was called the Conte Biancamano ship. It took them two weeks to leave and come here. Um, so it was uh, a long road for them. And my mother was a young bride when she came. She was all 16 wow. when she came. So I often think or, of her and my sisters and I always think of how difficult it would have been for her in the day to leave her country, coming going to another country that she knew nobody except her husband. Uh, but they managed through the years. They came and they had a lovely life. Um, I'm also the oldest in my family. I, there's four of us. Uh, there's myself and there's Rosanna and Lucy and our little brother who came way later than all of us. Uh, he's His name is Frank, known as Chi, and he lives in Woodbridge uh, in down in Toronto. My husband, I'm married to my husband, Dominic Gentili. Um, we've been married for 43 years uh, this June 16th. Uh, we have two children, uh, our son Francesco and his wife Lindsay, they live in Milton, Ontario. We have two grandsons, Dominic and Bryson, and my daughter Erica lives in Thunder Bay with her boy boyfriend Ian and they have a little black lad named Samson. Oh, yeah. that's so nice. What did you do for fun as a child? Well, growing up in our Italian community, all we had was our siblings that we played with and our cousins. And living on Walker Street, there was a whole slew of us. There was our family, the Spagelli family, the, the other Costa family. So it was always, always about 15 or so kids. We just rode our bikes up and down the street. Uh, we couldn't go further than up and down the street because, you know, it was kind of crazy busy in those days, in the early 60s. We played outside. We played hopscotch like everybody. Hide and seek was always a big one. Um, that was a lot of fun that we had. We always we always stayed together. We had our birthdays together. We had sleepovers together. It, it was just really, it was a really nice time in those days. It was difficult growing up, I'm sure, for our parents, you know, but we all had a happy life. It was it was good. What are your favorite memories of Scriber? All I, I re, like we were growing up, we didn't really go around much. Like I remember just going to school and the fun thing about that is our neighbor, she used to pile all eight or 10 of us in her little car. That would be Mary, Mary Spicelli. She'd take us to school. That was always fun. Um, we played with our friends. We'd go to church. Um, we just, it was just lazy life. It was just fun. There was no, no nowhere to go. Our parents, my dad worked, my mom was a stay at home mom. So it's not that it's like today where you're running, going to things. It was just, it's just a simple life. And it was fun. Where was your dad employed? My dad, uh, when he first came here, actually he came a few years before he married my mom. And he worked for um, Geronimo Figlamani. That was his uncle. So he, he did some work where he worked in the coal and they, they did work for him all around. And then eventually they all, triggered off to the CPR. So my dad worked and it was called the turnabout in the CPR and he worked there for many years and we didn't have a vehicle in those days. So I remember the snow was this high. My dad would have to climb over the, the snow bank and walk all the way through to go there. He did that for years. And then all of a sudden after 25 years, they said, okay, uh, we're closing where the area he was working. And he came home and he was just devastated. He already had had four children. He was, um, in his 40s, so that's difficult. And you know, they didn't go to school to say they had a, uh, a background, they just had experience, which fortunate for him, there was they were hiring in, in the mill that in the days, KC, and they tried to round down a bunch of men. So my dad, his brother, and a few other, other gentlemen that ran out of jobs got those jobs. And he worked there for another 25 years until he got sick and um, 
ended up passing away and not able to uh, even retire from there. But when he did come home to say that he lost his job and we don't know what to do, we all cried because we thought, where are we going to go? And Chaplo was the name he came up. We said, we don't want to go to Chaplo. We like it here. So with uh, the help of others to get that position in the military Bay, it was good. It was a good life for my, my dad and, and us too. It was very lovely for them. Can you tell us about your jobs that you've had? Yeah, actually, I was a stay-at-home mom for a long time. I was home with my two children, and I ended up babysitting my sister's kids because they were the ones that had the jobs. And I thought, well, I'll stay home and watch all the kids. And we had so much fun with them, too. I used to take them, believe it or not, I'd pile them in the car. We'd go up to Sand Lake. we spend the whole afternoon every day. So that's a memory that the kids still say today, which I loved. Um, uh, that was that was happy for them and happy for me. I started to work actually. The it was called the Mom and Me program, and um, uh, we had Donna Mikalak. She introduced it to the community. I, I believe that part of that that's how that came about, and it started in the Anglican Church downstairs. But then it got so big in the community that we had to relocate, and we ended up going to the rec center, which we uh, we had it. It didn't cost us anything because it was. It was a few years, many years ago. So we had other coordinators in in the day, but they all went back from their maternity leaves. They went back to work. So I was still home and I thought, I'm going to take this job. I had it for over 20 years. And I have to say that was my favorite job. I love the children. I love the kids. And it was so nice for especially um, moms. There was younger moms. There were older moms that had just had babies. And the ones that come to mind for me were the CPR wives. Because these ladies came to our town. They had one or two babies. Um, I We know for sure they travel every four years. They relocate to a new position. So them coming to this building, they had a whole bunch of fun. It was an hour and a half. All We had a little thing where all the parents would take a turn and bring um, a snack for the, the day. And it was we, we sing songs, we read. It was so nice. And and then after later on in the years, it used to be mom and dad and me because the moms were working, the dads were home. So we had to kind of change it about for them because they kept saying, we're the dads here, we're not the moms. <laughs> so we had to make them feel really good. And it was so much fun. I met so many people. Uh, it was it was lovely. Uh, the kids, even after the fact, we had to close this or put it, it, it ended when the Best Start came into our town, it, all over like the North Shore. That was a beautiful program too. It was a little bit more high tech than ours. Ours was just so simple, laid back. The moms would come and they would go. It, it was just, it was just the best. Uh, that was my favorite part. I love that. Then after um, I decided, so maybe I'll go in the workplace. My kids are a little bit older. The kids I was watching are, they were all gone to school. So I had heard that um, I put my name into the schools to supply teach and uh, I got called right away and uh, I ended up going. I've been in the school, both our schools in our town here for 30 years. I've been a, a supply teacher and, and I love that too. I love meeting the kids. I love all the staff I met through the years. And even the kids, they say, oh, Mrs. G, I remember you. <laughs> I have to think for a minute because it's been 30 years and it's nice to be um, remembered in that way that you, you were part of their lives, eh? And then one day I, I heard that there was an opening at Spinoni Home Furniture. So I walked in and at the time, uh, Lola Spinoni was a manager. So I walked in and I introduced myself and uh, she I asked her if she, I have heard that the girl is leaving, going to college, if she needed any help. She said, "We I think we're gonna be looking in the near future. Uh, we'll let you know. Um, she did call me that Friday. She goes, come in, we'll have a check. You learn the computer, you'll learn a little bit of this and that. And it was lovely. Um, just to let you know, you're going to be working some Saturdays. And Lola and I laughed forever because it was a lot of Saturdays. Her and I worked a lot of Saturdays. So I've been at Spadonis for 26 years and such an, a lovely opportunity. They're wonderful people to work for. I just love it. And then um, my coworker, Carol, she came in in September and uh, we worked together. It was lovely. And just seven years ago when uh, Lola retired, Lola, Carol says to me, I think I'm going to be taking the manager position. What do you think? I said, nice. That's really nice. But we're doing this together. I said, okay. Yeah. So we've been working together and it's, it's, it's wonderful. And, um, I find a, a new look in our store. It's changed. We've moved with the times, you know, um, I was just thinking about how old our building was in the day. I had a look at it. It was in 1885 that it was built this the, the store down the street and it was it's the oldest building we have in the, in our community um so and it was built by the mcintosh family 
in the day. Um, and then the Spadoni brothers, or family, took it over in 1925, and they've had it. So this year, we'd be, we would be celebrating our 97th anniversary. Oh, wow. With the store, so that's, that would be wonderful. And home furniture came in, in, in 1987. So uh, with the turnaround of having uh, home furniture coming to the store, I think it changed everything. It changed the community. Um, as you all know, our store has a lot of stuff. We sell the appliances. We sell the furniture. We try to have as much as we can um, locally. Right. You know, we are an aging com community now. Not everybody wants to rush out and, and look um, and, and into the store. Um, everything changing now with uh, everything's online. Yeah. Like uh, people are coming, it's it's different. When we first started there a few years ago, people would come in and they look around and they say, I want this. Now when people are coming into our store, this is what I want, this is what I saw. And it's 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 good too, because it, helps us to to be in with the you know in the with the times and stuff yeah how have things changed since covid are things getting back to normal or what was the whole process the whole process of that was well interesting to all of us you know in our lives um i remember before before i went into working i was remember being at the store at the school that day and it was uh, march 13th and the principal came in and said today's our last day we're closing the school. The government's closing the school. We don't know when we're coming back. That was like, I still have goosebumps about that. It was it was yeah. just so weird that that happened. So I went back to work and I said to Carol, oh, this is what's happening. Yes, we're following that. So we did what all the protocols were. We closed uh, like we had to do. And uh, But, you know, we live in a small town. And uh, we had lots of people uh, in the in that era of the of the the couple of months that we were closed, we were close to the public, but we welcomed our our public in. Like we had calls, my fridge is broken. We weren't supposed to have anybody coming in, but you know we did it diligently where they could come. They came in, they had they had a look at what they were looking for. Um, they we met them at the door. We did all the proper protocol. Mm -hmm. They they give us a number, we put it in there on their credit card. They pick it up and they leave it. They, they take it out we wouldn't deliver because we couldn't deliver but that was that was helpful and we were so thankful that we were able to help these people because it's frustrating you know every all of a sudden the world stopped your fridge stops you know mm. where, where am i going to go so we were happy to have that um it's been really well for us our business because um we've had people that you know what they couldn't be bothered to go anymore life sort of like we all know life stopped it was very simple so you're going to run and get something you're going to take it home so no, it helped us a lot, and and we were we were always eager to help everybody. Um, we just love being helpful because we are, and and that's what Scriber's all about. That's part of Scriber, right? Exactly. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how the store has changed throughout the years? Um, I can just tell you what I've seen. Like I've seen pictures of our store. Uh, we have some old. Uh, you know pictures of them and i remember the door was not the entrance that you walk in now is it's in like in the corner like facing the the where the old um i'm going to let you know where the old uh, municipal uh, building was uh, so that was the entrance so these doors must have that we go in now must have been come they must have come in later but according to the pictures i remember them having it was like beautiful dark furniture with clear glasses on there and they had their jewelry in there their watches and uh, they had clothes, they had uh, men, if you wanted to look uh, really spiffy as a man, that's where you had to go with Spironi, uh store in the day. The shoes, the gloves, the mitts, the everything was perfect for the men. And then the women on the other way was a women's side. And they had beautiful clothes and sometimes it was like a boutique because it was a one only. So you weren't didn't have to worry about like... Uh, wearing the same dress as, as your you know your sister down the street sort of thing so that would that was really nice and they also had at one point they had um, the watch jeweler his name was Mike I don't remember his last name but I remember going in as a little girl and uh, I was always kind of nervous of him because he was very quiet and and uh, he was a really really good man he worked there for a very long time too um, and and the building is it's like I said, 97 year olds today, it's the oldest building we have in our in our community. And it's a very lovely building. It's huge. So where we work is the base. We have our store, we have our, fur our furniture area. On the other end is a, a hairdressing spot. And upstairs is what you see, the bottom of our, of our store is upstairs. And in the early days, um, uh, the Spadoni's aunt, Uncle Gino and Auntie Rosa, they moved from Italy too and they came and they lived there. 
And she was an interesting lady. Um, I know I heard stories from my aunt. So in the 1950s or 60s, uh, uh, when brides were getting married, they'd go to her. And for some reason, she had the perfect dress for the perfect woman that walked up the stairs and she'd fit them she'd put their makeup and she'd do their hair and she'd sometimes uh, you know give them jewelry to match and I'm just talking to my old my older aunt the other day she goes it was such a fun experience so to them it would be like being a, a princess going upstairs and then coming down um all dressed for your wedding um so that that's really lovely memories and the basement's big it's just um it's a really nice uh, building that um, I think everybody went into. I remember as a little girl, because they had jeans. I wanted to buy a pair of jeans, and they were a little bit expensive in those days. But I went in, I tried them on, and I thought, well, I can't buy those yet. But I kept going to try them, and finally, um, I ended up getting them. And I was, I felt so cool with jeans <laughs> in the day, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, how do you feel our town has changed throughout the years? Um, it changed in um, so many ways. Um, some areas where it's not our town's fault that it changed like when the closures of the kc closed on several occasions that put a damper on everything we had families that um, didn't have a job anymore we had families that decided i'm still young enough i have to relocate find another job to support my family so that was uh, important um, of course businesses had to weren't thriving they had some had to just say we can't do it anymore. Like downtown Scriber, we had a few, many stores. We had um, McLean's in the day, we had the Bay, and I'm going far back on yeah. this. We had Two Doors Down. There was a cute little store that would be so well received today because it was so unique. Um, we had the grocery stores, we had, you know, Figlamenis, we had Costas, we still have Costas uh, still. Um, and just other little stores, we used to have um, a jean shop on the highway. Odds had, Botkins. Yeah, Odds Botkin. We had Sports World uh, in, in the day, we had lots of them. And I guess through the years when, I don't know if it was um, the time uh, when computers were coming in or the high tech stuff where people were able to um, go online even then maybe not order as much as it's, it is today but they were accessible to that and then people started traveling to the city and opportunities were there so you know if I, I'm up here I'm gonna pick up something um, and then just again just the time it was nobody's fault or nobody really wants anything to close we want things to open up in our community and um, that was really sad when that did when that went down and now we see changes we see uh, things popping up along. We have on the highway, we have three new restaurants, which is awesome. We have um, uh, gas stations. We have, uh, you know, st we have st still some stores downtown here that are opening. And um, it's, it's, it's going better for the better. We have trialing, tr we have difficult times sometimes in, in, a, in a community, but we all have to be strong and be positive of what's coming forward because just because something didn't work today or last year or three years ago it might come in the future and it'll work and we see that right now we see in our communities that because of the covid life has changed for so many people people have thought i don't want to live in the city anymore i want to move where it's um, fresh air where it's uh, quiet we have met in our store alone we have met so many people that have sold their houses um, in BC, in Toronto, they've come up to Scriber, they've bought all our houses here, these people. They're young retirees. They they just want to relax here, enjoy the view, beautiful Lake Superior, who doesn't love that? Then you've got the people that are here working from home, you know, and uh, we still have these businesses here. I mean, you can call, if you're online, you can text anybody and say, what, is this available? And they'll say, yeah, sort of thing. And you're able to, to buy something like that online. I think it's going to be I think Scribe is going to do well. Like we're, we're that town. We're that town that can be low and we can just jump up. We have young families coming back in town. We're having babies born all the time. Our schools are starting to fill up. So it's that's all welcoming and exciting news to see our town come up. There has been a lot of new families moving into town. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how your husband came from Italy? Well, that's an interesting story as well. Um, my husband came in September of 1972, and he was 17 years old when he came from from uh, Italy to Canada. But how that story went is that um, Bob and Bruce Spironi traveled to Italy on a holiday, and they went to visit some of their um, 
co-workers that lived in Italy and they were talking about work and stuff and, and Bob's always was always recruiting and he said to that his friend there do you know of anybody I'm looking for workers and uh, he said okay I have someone that I could introduce you to so they went to the shop where Dominic was working he was uh, 15 at the time he was working as an auto body man and um, he asked him questions um, through the language because Dominic didn't speak English at all and Bob didn't really know the Italian so their friend did the the talking back and forth. Bob says to him, if you ever come to Canada, I have a job for you. So um, that's how that started. And, and Dominic went home at the age of 15 and says to his dad, I want to go to Canada. So I guess Dominic was very excited about meeting this nice man from Canada and there's work available for him. He went home to his dad and said, dad, I want to go to Canada. His dad looked at him and said, if you want to go, make it happen, get all your stuff in order and go, which he ended up coming at the age of 17. So it took two years for him to get all this, um, you know, everything ready to come to Canada. And when he first started his job, he, he was working next door here where our fire department was. That's where the old auto body uh, building was. And he worked there for many years and uh, he worked with different people. He worked with a lot of older people when he first came here. So it was kind of difficult with the language, but you know, he eventually got on that until they moved to Terrace Bay where the, it had to, the whole Spadoni Motors moved to there and he worked there for a very long time. He worked for Spadonis for 45 years as an auto body uh, man and he just loved his job and um, that's how he got here and and he said in the first days that he came of course the snow when anybody comes from any country to Canada and especially to a little town the snow is always like a drawback and he thought he wanted to go back after two years. But then he got together with his cousins that were here. They introduced him to hunting, fishing, snow machining. He's never looked back. <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. So while we envision our future for the town, Scriber has an aging population and a lot of people will be retiring. How do you envision the future? That's a really good point, Linda. It is true. Like you think about in past years, um, our our pa our parents, for example, they worked till they were like 65, 70. They worked later on in life. The world has changed right now where people are working, they're retiring at 55 and uh, 60 and uh, and their the outlook on life is so much different. They want to travel. They want to just um, do just do something about them. So because we are an aging community, a half of us are, we either probably 60 and up and not counting our 70, 80, even 90 year olds that we're so blessed to have in our community still. Um, how are we going to replace that? It has to be, I guess, in, in make sure that um, jobs are available for people, encouraging them, because um, we we have, we'll need that in the future, but we do have the young people in our communities that are here. We have young families that have just moved here. Uh, they're in their 20s, they're working for CP, or they're working in schools, or they're working in offices here. They're having young families. They're probably gonna just stay here, and, and that will be the, the, the new generation that will keep our town going. Thank you, Mary, for coming and spending your time and your stories with us. Well, I thank you as much too, Linda. I really enjoyed being here. You know what, being born in Scriber, um, I'm so thankful to be here. Like this is a, we have lots of things that we're missing in our communities because we're a small community, but you know, you can be living in the city and not going anywhere and it's being the same thing. So having our, our lovely town here, welcoming people, the fresh air, um, it's just a, a great place to be. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.